everybody. Welcome to The Bottom Line. I'm Susan, and this is my husband, Jim. And we're here to, to talk to you today about some powerful truths from the Word of God that we believe can change your life from this day forward. That's right. You know, I can remember back, gosh, it's been 40-plus years now. Uh, we heard, uh, we, we were at a, a seminar or whatever. And a seminar. A man named Jay Blevins was, was teaching and uh, uh, he was saying things that I had never heard. I mean, just like, mm -hmm. wow, I couldn't believe it. Just wow. what all it was a, it, But it wasn't weird. It, he was just a Bible teacher. Right. He was just taking the Word of God right. and just. And he was telling you things that God wanted to do in your life and mm -hmm. wanted for you. I'd never heard anything like that. Yeah. And uh, I remember we went home and uh, you, we, we put the children to bed. And you went to bed. And I remember I told you, I said, Susan, I'm going to go. Just look at some of these scriptures because I just can't believe that what, all that stuff he said. I just can't believe that this is true. Yeah. And so I went in there and I, I, I had written down and I, I looked at them. I read them. I thought, well, that's what it says. And I read them again. And I said, well, that is what it says. And I read them again. And I said, that is what it says. It is what I it remember, says. I remember I went in there and I woke you up. Yeah, you did. And I said, Susan, everything that that man said is in the Bible. Mm -hmm. So here's what I think we should do. I think that this is the way we ought to live from now on. You, you know what I think, Jim? Looking back on that, I think it's not that we were so totally ignorant. We knew some Bible truth. We didn't understand about the fact that you can appropriate God's Word into your everyday life. That's really what it's about. That, yeah, that and we, we had no understanding of the love of God. Right, yeah, that's true. Yeah, the love of God, there's, you know, he lavished it yeah. on us yes. when he said, you can be my child. Uh, yeah, I mean, look so. past all the, all the inconsistencies in our lives. Look past all the sin in, in our lives. Look past every misdeed ever done and said, you can be my child. Yeah, that that's lavish love. It is. It's You're what right. that is. I mean, we we yeah. just had no understanding uh, about the love of God. And you know, there's a scripture in the in the Gospel of John, chapter 17, and this is my interpretation of it: mm -hmm. is that God loves you, God loves me, just like He loves Jesus. Just let that sink in. Yeah, for just that's a like wow. Let that sink in for just a moment. God loves me. God loves you, just like He loves Jesus. There is no difference. That there can't be, because God is love. The mm -hmm. love that He has for one person is no different than the love that He has for another person. Yeah, that's right. So anyway, we want to talk to you today. Did you already tell them what we're talking about? I don't think I did. We're gonna be talking about whatever, whatever it, it takes. takes whatever it uh -huh. takes and there is a i believe that there is a level of living in this in this earth earth that w where we are right now mm -hmm. that is far beyond what most people can even imagine i think you're right yeah. it would be called the kingdom the kingdom of, of God. God. most people most people are just trying to make it till Friday so they can get paid. Absolutely. That is that that is not a good way to live. Oh, that's that's a hard. Yes. That's it hard. Is, is. Okay, let's go to some scriptures. Okay. okay. Psalm thirty-seven. We're gonna read. Uh, start with verse one. It says, "Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord." And do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noon day. Now, did you see there where it said that he will give you the desires of your heart? You know, Jim, there is so much in this passage that you're reading yes. that... I'm, you know, you can understand. Yeah, I, I noticed that. But there are so many things here about about life, you know, and, and what it can be. 
you know, you have to go back and think about how God told Joshua that day. He said, look here. He said, you know, now he's fixing to go out and be a mighty warrior. Yes. And, you know, he's getting his, his instructions from, you know, his commander in chief, who is the Lord God Almighty. And he says, here's what I want you to do. I want you to meditate in the word day and night. That's what he told him. Yeah. And, you know, as you're reading this, I'm thinking, you know, you have to meditate on this. This is a passage where every, there are so many things just right here in what you've just read mm -hmm. that you just, you pass over if you just read it. You know, it, it's like you need to put this in your lunchbox <laughs> and take it with you, you know, when you go to work and pull it out, look at it again and look at it again and think about it again. But yeah, the light, He'll give you the desires of your heart. You know, going back to what that's you like, wow. You know, going back to what you said about Joshua, when, whenever the, you know he was, they were getting ready to go and, and take the land, and the Lord told him, the Lord put him aside. Mm -hmm. He said, "Look," he said, "Here's the deal." He said, "This is you, you've got to meditate in this word day and night." Yep. Here's what you have to do. He said, "Then, then mm -hmm. you will be successful." and then you will prosper. Now that tells me something. If you, if you just hurriedly read over that, you, don't, you miss it. Joshua's uh, uh, ability to, to win, his ability to prosper was not on God's side. It was on his side. God told him what to do. He said, if you'll meditate in the word day and night and do it, mm -hmm. then you will be successful and then you will prosper. So the, the success and the prosperity weren't something that God was withholding. It was up to Joshua to possess it by meditating in the Word. Mm -hmm. and, and nothing has changed. It's still that yeah. way. Yeah. Now, going back to this particular passage in uh, Psalm 37, mm -hmm. just listen. I'm going to start with verse 3, okay? okay? He says, Trust in the Lord and do good. It's just, I mean, you have to really consider that. Trust in God. Yeah. And then he says, dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. You know, that goes back to that whole thing about believe God and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. And then that, that helps you make sense of delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Right. And that's a two-way street, those desires of your heart. God gives you desires but God also grants desires right. that you have in your heart. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, so let's read. Let's skip down to verse eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. okay. It says, "The Lord knows the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in evil times, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied." Well, that that's good. You know, that reminds me that's back real in, the, good. in the book of Genesis. Uh, it said of Isaac says there was a famine in the land. Mm -hmm. And it said he sowed and he reaped a 100-fold return even in the days of the famine. Famine. Okay, that's, that's, that's amazing. That's the favor of God. And see, you know, it's, it's written right here. In the days of famine, they will be satisfied. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when we started talking about this passage, we, we made reference to the fact and early on as we were introducing what we were going to do, you mm -hmm. talked about how actually, you know, you might just be living a mundane life, just working payday to payday, and a lot of people are doing that. And then you suggested, but you know what? There's a higher place for us as believers. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know, and it's called a kingdom of God. It's called living under His rule and His authority. And that's what happens if you do that in the days of famine, You'll be satisfied. That's right. Let me read that That's something verses that. 18 and 19 from the Passion Translation. Okay. It says, Day by day the Lord watches the good deeds of the godly, and he prepares for them his forever reward. Even in a time of disaster, he will watch over them, and they will always have more than enough no matter what happens. Wow. So it sounds to me like this is pretty good. Yeah. And, you, and you know, Jim, you could you just quickly... Go back in your um, previous Bible stuff that we've talked about where Jesus told the, the parable about building the houses, mm -hmm. you know, and he said one man built on the sand and the other man built on the rock. And the storm happened in both of their lives. 
and the only one house stood is the one that was built on the solid foundation. Solid foundation. And, and that's the one and this built. This is the solid foundation. Yeah. The Word of God. And see, the storm was there. I mean, we're not saying the famine's not going to be there, but even in those days, it should be different for us as believers right. to rise above the famine right. and be those prosperous people in the earth anyway. Yep. Right. That's right. Right. That's exactly. And see, that, I mean, you know, we, we live in the kingdom of God, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, Jesus told Peter, he said, it is the Father's delight to give you the keys to, to the, the kingdom. kingdom. In other words, what mm -hmm. does the key do? It unlocks Opens. something. Yep. So what we have in here are the keys that will unlock the kingdom of God in our lives. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, you said something a while ago about trusting in the Lord. I did. Let's skip down to Romans chapter 4 and verse 20, mm -hmm. talking about Abraham. Yeah. It said, he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. He didn't waver from the promise, even though, naturally, naturally speaking, what God told him seemed impossible. Mm -hmm. But it says right here that he did not waver at that promise. He was strengthened. He was strengthened in, in faith. faith. So, giving glory to God. You know, there, there may be something that God has spoken to you in your life about something he wants to accomplish in your life or something that, that uh, he has for you to do. Well, here's the thing about it. Looking at it from a natural standpoint, you think, well, that's not possible. Mm -hmm. But yet, with God... All, All things, things are, are possible. possible. When the angel came to Mary, he told her what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And she said, you know, she knew that that was not possible. because She said, I haven't done what is necessary for this to happen. Right. But the Bible says, but she said, be it unto me according to your word. In other words, she said, whatever your word says, that's what I'm going to believe. Mm hmm that is powerful. It is. You know that, and see, you're making reference to Abraham, first of all, and you know, he's called the father of faith, <laughs> you know, and so when you look at his life and you go to the book of Romans and you can see so many incredible things, there's so many chapters in there, they'll start with a question like, well, what did we learn from Abraham? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, there, it's just, it's just really written in such a way that you can say, oh, okay, one, two, three, four, five. But it was always by faith. It was always his believing, never his works, right. never. Just right. like it is for us today. You know, we, a lot of times we get bogged down in this whole work mentality thinking, well, you know, if I could just serve more, if I could just give more, if I could just do more, it has nothing to do with it. It had, all has to do with belief. That's right. Believing who God is and that he is a rewarder as we seek him That's right. and then right here i was just going to point this out this verse you just read in romans 4:20, uh -huh. where it said uh, he didn't waver talking about abraham he didn't you know i mean he didn't even how is that even possible yeah i mean in the, in the bible said he was well aware of his age and, and if y'all are familiar with it you know he was 100 years old. That's right. Well, when, when the promise was made, he was 75. He was 75 when God said, you're going to have a son. And then 25 years passed. Can you imagine that for 25 years, he did not waver? I mean, can you imagine that? You can't even. No, no. But anyway, see right here it says, but he was strengthened in faith. And it says, giving glory to God. I'm just going to say, Perhaps that is how he was strengthened in faith is because every day he got up giving glory to God. God. You know, every day, may, we don't know. We can't look into the, you know, it would be great if you could go back and, and just be there when it was all mm -hmm. happening and see, well, what did he say? What did he do? But maybe he did get up every day and say, hey, I'm the father of many nations God said so. You know, maybe he did. That's I right, mean, yeah. I don't know what he you did. You know, it, it says in the book of, uh, I believe it's Philippians, he said, let your request be made known to God with thanksgiving. thanksgiving. You know, mm -hmm. maybe maybe he got up every day. I don't. We don't know this. And just began to thank God for the son. 
Yeah, maybe he did. Uh, my, maybe in, in, in my life and your life, maybe maybe we've we've asked God for something. Maybe we've made our petition. Mm -hmm. And so for, from from the time that we made the petition, we just begin to thank God that we have what we asked for. Yeah. You say, well, you can't do that. If you don't really have it, you can't. Oh, sure you can. Mm -hmm. You can thank him for it. You can. Because because of the there there's a verse that talks about how when you ask anything in his name, let's see, how does it go? If According to his will. Yeah, and, and if he hears you, mm -hmm. and he will hear you if you're asking according That's to his right. will, yes. you know you have the petitions you desire of him. That's right. So, yeah, but see, again, this is a faith based message. Yeah, it's, it's, I, mean, I mean, it's you, based on believing what you can't see. That's right. You, I mean, it, it always comes back to, to without faith. It is impossible mm -hmm. to please God. That's right. That's right. I mean, we, you know, we, we don't, mm -hmm. we, uh, see, I remember, you know, I've, I, I've told it so many times, the summer 1958 when I got saved, yeah. okay? Well, see, I didn't know, and no, nobody told me, but I thought you just, from that moment on, you just did the best you could until you went to heaven. Yep. And mm -hmm. I didn't find out until I was about 22 that that's not the way it works. That yeah. is not the way the kingdom works. Right. The kingdom works by, by me renewing my mind to the things of God, knowing what God wants for me, knowing what God has already given to me, mm -hmm. and f for me to appropriate those things. And, 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 and we, we spend the rest of our lives doing that very thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, like, for instance, for the last, oh gosh, I can't tell you how many years, Pretty much every month, I read through the New Testament. Just I've, just I've just made that my habit. Yeah. And every once in a while, I'll read something. I'll think, wow, wonder why I never saw that before. Mm -hmm. I mean, just, boop, there it is. I know. You know. It's just amazing. It is amazing. So, anyway. And you're not bragging. Just, you're not bragging. No, I'm not bragging. I mean, I'm, I'm just saying. That's just what you do. You never, you, you never get to the place where you, where you know it all, sing it all. Right. Yeah. It's a definite process. There's always... There's always a fresh revelation that you've never seen before, and only God can reveal it to That's you. That's right. It doesn't come by reading. It comes by revelation. Mm -hmm. But if you don't read it, you can't get the revelation. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. There's two sides okay. in our relationship with God. Yep, there is. All right. What, number one is what God makes available to us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Number two is how we respond to what God has made available. What are this, this? God's made this available. How am I going to respond to it? Mm -hmm. You know, like for instance. Okay. For instance, the Bible said, "For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe in Him should not perish, but have everlasting, everlasting. life." Okay. There's the, there's what God's made available. Mm -hmm. Everlasting life. God's made that available. Okay. Okay. How am I going to respond to that? Well, I can. There, there several ways. I could just ignore it. Mm -hmm. Say, so, well, I, you know, I don't believe that. Or I could say, wow, okay, I'm going to receive Jesus Christ as my Savior. Mm -hmm. Okay, what, when I do that, what happens? I, be, I, I get born again. again. I am now, right. now living in God's family, living in God's kingdom. Mm -hmm. God made available to me the new birth. That's right. And I responded with, yes, that's what I want. Mm -hmm. Okay, All the promises in here are the same way. Mm -hmm. You know, there there is a, a, in the New Testament, there's a chapter or two that's dedicated to about this man having this huge feast. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, <clears throat> really rich man. And I can't even imagine how elaborate all the tables were and the utensils and the food. And anyway, so he told his servants, you know, to go out and make these invitations. And they came back and they said, well... Nobody wants to come. You know, this one said he had some new oxen and this one had a new wife and, you know, there were all these mm -hmm. different reasons. And so then in this same story, <clears throat> he says, go invite everyone. Okay, now that is just like what you said. Yes. Okay, we have all been invited to the banquet table but everybody doesn't go. That's right. 
everybody doesn't partake of it. You know, just like you were talking about the two sides to the relationship. God has made so much available, but you have to access it by By faith. faith. (laughs) By faith, yeah. And so a lot of people don't do it. A lot of people, you know, they're so attached to the world and, and, you know, their everyday life that they never take time out and say, well, what did, what did happen to me that day I said, Jesus is the Lord? What did happen? You know, a, a, a lot of people are born again, but they don't, they're not even aware of what could be in their lives. That's right. See, that, that's, that, there you go right there. They are not aware they're just not. of what could be. That's right. You know, uh, um, I can remember, you know, I mean, just, just as I go through our lives for the last 40 something years after mm-hmm. we got filled with the Holy Ghost yep. about uh, um, what God has, has done in our lives. And, you know, you think, well, and a lot of it you think, well, that was not even possible, but yet it, it still happened. It did. It, it sure happened. did. Yeah. And, and I mean, I'm every day I, 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 I hope for. And, the, and I want to receive the impossible. Mm-hmm. Right? Right. And so, you know, back to the title of this particular program that we're doing, Whatever It Takes. You know, it may take a sacrifice of your time. That's the biggest thing that it'll take. Yeah. You know, it may mean whatever it takes for you might mean that you've got to get up 30 minutes earlier or stay up 30 minutes later you know, but whatever it takes, we need to make ourselves available so we can access what's ours in the kingdom of God. Well, here's the thing about it. If you never take this book and you never read this book, you just, you know, sit it on the coffee table mm-hmm. and on Sunday morning you pick it up, take it to church with yeah. you. You don't really open it while you're there. Get home and you put it down. And then uh, you go through Monday through Saturday. And Sunday morning you wake up, there you, you pick it up, you take the church with you, and you never read in there what God has made available to you. You will never be able to appropriate what God has made available. You know, there's a, the, the woman at the well that we like to refer to. And anyway, this lady <clears throat> had gone to, you know, just get water one day and Jesus was sitting there and his disciples were all gone. So it's just her and him. And so anyway, he offered her the living water, yes, remember? Did. And so at the end of all this, she goes back because he's prophetic and tells her things about herself that nobody knew. And so anyway, she goes back to town and she tells all the people, you know, this, there's this, this, this could be the Messiah, you know? And so the whole town goes out or maybe not all at once, but I think eventually they all did, and wanting to hear what he had to say. And then at the end of it, they said, now we believe, not because of what you told mm. us, but because we heard for ourselves. And that's what we're talking about. you got to hear the word of God, the word of truth for yourself. You know, when, when I was growing up, I was in a Baptist church, and I'm telling you what, I'm thankful to this day because one of the things that they did at that time, and they may still, I don't know, they had like a thing called training union. It was on Sunday nights. And so you had something, you had these little envelopes and you had to check these boxes. And one of them was daily Bible reading. What a great thing to do, you know, because it taught children at a very young age, hey, I'm going to have to read this myself. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what it's all about is having it for yourself. You can't give away something you haven't got. That's right. So, that's right. you know, it's important that you avail yourself to that so you can And you can't forward. appropriate something that you don't know is yours. That's right. All right. Let's go back to Romans chapter 4 Romans chapter about four. Abraham. I'm going to read this to you from the Passion Translation. Okay. It says, in spite of being nearly 100 years old when the promise of having a son was made, His faith was so strong that it could not be undermined by the fact that he and Sarah were incapable of conceiving a child. Mm -hmm. He never stopped believing God's promise, for he was made strong in his faith to father a child. And because he was mighty in faith and convinced that 
God had all the power needed to fulfill the promises. Abraham glorified God. Wow. He could not be undermined. Could not be undermined by the fact that he and Sarah were incapable mm -hmm. of doing that. You know, see, at some point, Abraham made what we would call a quality decision. Yes, he did. You know, he, he made up his own mind. You know, he personally received from God a promise, and he chose to take that. That's right. And see, it has to be the same way on our part. And see, here's the thing about it. I mean, you and I have been married now for a long time, right? Mm -hmm. But I can't do that for you. Nope. Even though, I mean, you know, I would like to be able to. I can't, I can't did you have to appropriate the promise for yourself. yourself. That's right. It has That's to be how done. it works. It, 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 it just has to be done that way. Mm -hmm. now, I, now, I can remember back when, when we got started in this journey, I was, I don't remember, 22, 23 years old. And, and so, we, but we, the, the, the neat thing about it is, is that we pursued it as one. Yeah. In other words, we, we were united in this. Yeah. And this is the way we are going to live. That's an advantage to, uh, to us for sure. It was a sure. definite advantage. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was a help for me. It was a help for you. Yeah. Because, uh, I mean, I, I had you to, on days when you would kind of, <laughs> I had you to encourage me. Mm -hmm. And on days when you were that way, I was there to encourage you. But, I mean, the thing about it is all the promises of God, all the promises of God are in yes. him, yes. And in him, amen. That's right. So that means they're all possible of fulfillment in my life. Mm -hmm. Right? That's right. So. Whatever talking, it takes. We're talking about whatever it takes. Yeah. What, whatever it takes. Are you willing to do whatever it takes to receive the promises of God? That's right. That's a good word. Well, Susan and I want to thank you for allowing us to be a part of your week. If you have prayer requests, you can contact us here at the bottom line. We'll be happy to pray for you. We want to thank you, absolutely thank you for your continued financial support. We appreciate it so much. And remember this, Jesus said, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you should know the truth, and the, and the truth, truth will set, set you, you free. free.